Welcome back everybody, Maxwell here, bringing you Victoria 2 with the Pop Demand mod. Uh, what this Pop Demand mod, it, it changes uh, quite a bit about everything in the, while remaining as close as it can to the vanilla of the game. One of the major differences is the fact that China, or the King Empire, is just completely different. It also has all of these uh, Tibet, Mongolia, and Korea as uh, satellites. Uh, other things that, does, that this mod has is it has a lot of different uh, resources or goods now in it as well that make it a little bit more complex overall in the game. Uh, another thing is that there's Africa. Like, there's actually nations here instead of you just colonize. And, uh, Colonization is a little bit different in this game, and the technologies have been revamped, so it's no longer 100% uh, you need to do this to have the best playthrough. It can be a little bit different. But in today's game, what we're going to do is we're going to play as Sweden. Why Sweden? Um, it's a little bit more of a, a relaxed playthrough. I, I could play as Prussia. I, I really love, I mean, I'm German, but I, I love Prussia in this game because you can be, like, you can get so strong. But I don't particularly like how the whole diplomacy game is played in this. And uh, in the King Empire, I'm definitely thinking about doing uh, an actual series on the King Empire. That's going to be a tough one. I mean, if you ever, if you survive to Westernization, you're going to be a beast. But before that, it's it's really difficult. I tried playing a couple minutes of it in the dam. But we're going to play as Sweden, and the few things that we're going to do um, are going to be done in game. There's a couple of missions that Sweden would want to do. Uh, one of those is we want to form Scandinavia, or the Kalman. Uh, the Kalman. We form the Kalman Union. So, the idea is that currently Sweden has Norway under it. However, Scandinavia is primarily Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. So, what we need to do for that is we need to have Denmark, Sweden, and our sphere. Which means we're going to have to be a great power. Another thing is the fact that there's Finland. Right now we have a, a nice friendly relationships with Finland, but they're satellite and in the sphere of Russia. So we want that land because we have cores there, like all over Finland. So we want that. We really, really want that. So we're going to have to go with war with Russia. And we are really weak compared to Russia, if you didn't notice. And so we need allies. I mean, there's an obvious ally of having the United Kingdom, because I mean, they're really friendly. They like us. Uh, and they can be a big help. However, because I want to actually do something against Russia in this playthrough, we're going to try and ally Prussia. So the first things that we're going to try and do are ally Prussia, improve our relations with our neighbors, and get to a great power, and put our neighbors into our sphere. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to go directly. Let's just go through the, the screens. Okay, so there's F1 is production. In production, we uh, don't have any factories right now. And frankly, starting out, it's probably a good idea not to just immediately jump on the bandwagon for it, especially for Sweden. For some countries, perfect. But for Sweden, not so much. Budget-wise, what do we want to do? We want to get education administration up. Just purely we want to get them up. And in this game, one of the better ideas to do is to increase the poor's taxes and decrease the rich and the middle class as far as you can to zero. Rich, you, you pretty much want at zero, while the middle class later in the game becomes easier to push it to, to zero. But this is a good amount right here. The way, right now, unfortunately, we're losing money, so one of the things that we can do with looking around here is notice that we're not going to go to war anytime, like, really soon. So we can actually decrease the budget on military, but one that we really decrease it on is our navy. This will pretty much mothball. If, you played, if anybody's played other Paradox games, it's, it's pretty much mothballing it. 
and it will put it at 5% efficiency. However, we want to have the rest of our units to be relatively okay still. So uh, depending on the situation, if it gets closer to war, we definitely have to increase the budget. But for now, this is really good because we're actually a very literate country. So we want to increase our technology output. So to do that, we're going to go to now technology. The easiest way, because right now, Sweden is a secondary power in 11th position. The easiest way to get to 8th power or above, which gives you great power status and allows you to actually put people into your spheres of influence, is to get prestige. Because industry will come a little later, and military, Sweden doesn't have enough population to really get a good military score. So, we should go to our culture and get Romanticism. Romanticism is a great start because it gives you the prestige that you really need. Whereas some other ones would be maybe education efficiency uh, and practical, some other ones for here, tax efficiency. Pretty much once it's 1840, we also need this, definitely research. Because what we're going to do in this a Sweden playthrough is get prestige, get research, and then industry will follow through that. So right now we're just going to select Romanticism. Now, politics in general, uh, we're, we're going to automatically select the rights of man. It gives us consciousness, but it also gives us prestige, which, well, we need. Reforms in general, uh, they will come. They will definitely come, even though we're a conservative nation, because as our people get more consciousness, they'll want them. Uh, right now, we have a pretty severely large uh, conservative basis, which means that we'll most likely stay in conservative playthrough. However, going to liberal sometimes actually does happen, which affects the budget. The only thing is, like, liberal, in my mind, is in this game is, is very good, because just because I, I love to micromanage, but micromanaging the factories can get a little annoying sometimes. So the fact that what this can do, Liberal Party, is the uh, capitalists can expand and bankrupt the bankrupt remove. Sorry, they can remove bankrupt factories is really key. So I don't have to pay attention to that as much. Whereas the conservative, they can't expand the factories and they can't remove bankrupt factories. So over time, I'll probably try and push for this. It doesn't particularly matter in the end. Either one we do, I just don't want it to flip flop all the time where it's conservative and liberal, conservative and liberal, because that affects the budget a lot. Next, population. What we want right now is to get the best out of our research. So we want clergymen and bureaucrats and capitalists. I don't know why they're not showing up here, but capitalists is one of those that needs to be increased. But for right now, going to go with clergymen. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with uh, bureaucrats first, because what I want to do is I want to get this to 1%, because once it's that optimal, we can actually even reduce our administrative uh, output, because at that point, all it does is increase police and reduces revolt risk, which we're probably not going to have that much. But the good thing that it will do is it increases our tax efficiency, which will be really necessary. So first, bureaucrats, which we're going to have to take a look on so that we don't go too far above one. Then we're going to do clergymen, and then capitalists. So a big thing of it for this mod is that the trade screen, it's just, there's so many different things on here now. Uh, silk was in the game before, but I mean, there's now cigar cigars, boots, print, there's a stock exchange, there's cigarettes, uh, that tobacco was in there too. I mean, there's, there's just a lot of other different things that are in this game that make a point to expand the overall trade system. And military-wise, we're okay for now. So we have a, a decent amount of money to start off with, and we're not going to expand any of our forts right now. We will, but right now we're okay. But there's some things we need to do right off the bat, and that is just to put it together, have uh, a naval base in every province. 
This is more just my own preference because I, I just want Nago bases to be everywhere. And I'm just going to set this as the point where all the military units collide, uh, as a rally point and stack together. And this is the naval rally point down here. Why down here? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, well, that's everything for the start. Oh, except I want to improve my relations with Russia because I want them to ally me or I ally my, them. Either way, as long as it works out. Uh, for a Sweden playthrough, usually you're going to have... Ooh, nice. Oh, there's another thing that's that's a good birth rate uh, is a part of this game. And I don't know if it's completely arbitrary or not, but having a good population growth, a higher population growth, is really important, especially for uh, population, uh, a country with a population the size of Sweden. We really need a lot more uh, people. So at the beginning, I'm just gonna have five speed right now. For some whatever reason, the beginning we get another fifty thousand. I don't know where it comes from, but whatever. So the UK is currently the world leader in uh, in industry. But don't worry, at some point we will not really catch up with them, but we'll catch up in general. So for the first years, oh god, this is like the worst guy. I had, I've had some playthroughs where I get really great first mini uh, ministers appointed. Another difference from the vanilla game is you get these guys. You get, he's a raving loon. What is wrong with you, guy? Uh, I think there's a thing where I can remove him. Uh, but I don't know if that's actually in this game anymore. That's unfortunate. Well, uh, in this country. So, right now, we're trying to get romanticism up. We're having a decently healthy profit, very good. Whenever we can, we're going to expand on our military. Like right there, we actually got another person. What is our military right now? Oh wow, under under supplied, that's for certain. But we need we need cannons and engineers. Cannons. Uh, let's push out one more. Oh, let's improve with Russia again. Oh, sorry. Russia. Prussia. Oh, we got another one. So all these units will help our military score, if at all. It's not really that much because, once again, Sweden's population is too small to really have a good military base. So we're going to need industry and prestige. And the main goal is, in my mind, ally Prussia get Denmark into our sphere, and then form Scandinavia, take Finland back from Russia, and eat Russia's lands. I mean, Prussia's probably going to go up here and down here and all that stuff, but I, I kind of want just this land. That's my expansion point of view, because colonization isn't really a Swedish game. We're, we're a little bit too far away. We might be able to colonize here, but that's that might be pushing it. But everything else should be okay for Sweden. We just need to hope and get lucky for prestige and get into those. Oh, and whenever we can, we want to pressure Russia. I don't know exactly if we can, but we need to pressure Russia to become a... Uh, go into wars. Oh, we're also very close. There we go. So this one's already at 1%, right? Oh, almost. Ah, this one's at 1%, sorry. So, now we put this bureaucrat on here, and this one's almost at, there you go, 1%. So, the reason that I'm doing this is I don't want to have, like, a 7%, because I, I a lot of the time in some other games, I lose focus, <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, I look back and I'm like, oh, this place has 9% clergymen. That's not optimal. <laughs> so, right now we have uh, bureaucratic output of 0.83% in the country. Oh, good. Conservatives are keeping control. Alright, so once the bureaucrats get to... Oh, also I'm going to take out factory construction, building construction, just so this view is a little bit, you know, nice. Doesn't get too expansive. So once these guys get to 1%, I'm going to flip over to clergymen so I can get them to 2%. See, as you can see, the some of the numbers are actually increasing automatically for clergymen. Oh, 1% on... 
Stockholm. Remove focus, now go to Malmo and we put on some clergymen. And beer, oh, beer cast is there too. Remove and clergymen. Alright, so now we wait for those to be at 2%. Hopefully we'll get some good research output from that. Then we can increase our prestige gain from research. Oh, and look, see another thing that this game has a a different type of uh, in addition to it. So it taking care of population, it actually increases uh, effects. The more people you have, the more good things happen to you. But at the same time, there's also rebellions that could happen. So as this one, now we get more research points because we lost the effect of negative 0.25 research. And we're gaining a, a decent amount of people. Oh, a royal medding. Oh, Sweden. Yeah. So in this one, usually you just take this one because it increases your relations with most of the people around you. So, and I, and I would like that to keep my relations high. Oh, totally forgot about increasing relations with Russia. Um, I guess I might as well increase relations with Norway so that they're just happier with me in general. Will you form an alliance? No. Just base reluctance. Well, I'll increase relations with you again. Well, for the first time. Because I, I think it's going to be easier. Because the Kalman, uh, Kalman order or union is... What it will do is, if they have a higher relation with you, they have a higher chance of accepting. If they don't accept, they pretty much... Norway will rebel against me, which means I'll have to go to war, and I'll be like, God damn it, Norway, what did we just talk about? But yeah. Oh, uh, I have a decent amount of money right now, so I'm actually probably going to pump out... Yeah, I'm going to pump out forts into every single province. So what I'm doing here is, if you take con click control, you get a fort being built in every province in the state. So these five will get a fort. And the final one right here. Look at that. Perfect. So, now we have still have money, still a good amount of money. We're building forts. They have to get the materials first, and then they'll build it. And everything should be good. Prussia, become happier with me. Uh, another way is, so as you can see, the increased relation costs two Diplo points, and we gain Diplo points depending on for secondary power, of great power, the number one great power. Uh, so increased relations cost two, and you get 15. Decreased relations cost one, and you get minus 25, which is good because sometimes you can't justify a war if you have a relation over 50. Military access and give merit to access uh, are also only one, and they, they're better percentage-wise, efficiently, efficiency compared to the two for 15, but they're harder to get, of course. Right, 2%. <laughs> Almost completely lost. I was like, oh no, I'm over 1%. No, need to wait to 2%. All right. Oh, something happened. Ah, shaft mining in Malmo. All right, increase relations. So, once again, I want to ally Prussia because I want to ally somebody that can help me directly in this war. Because, frankly, I would... I wouldn't mind allying the United Kingdom, but how are they going to help me? They they will not land troops that well. Just plain and simple, they won't. So I'm going to have to do it all myself, is, is, is <laughs> what I have to do. Ah, uh, actually, uh, another the migration here. Oh, nice, nobody's leaving, nice. Whereas a lot of people are leaving to Americas over here. Ah, here's uh, another one of the good things. So, because we got leadership points because they increase over time, we now have leaders that are good enough, and uh, we have good leadership. So, better organization. Oh, and this is almost done. Oh, and you're almost at two percent. There you go. All right. Um, experimental railroad. Let's just knock this one out. When does this finish? June of 39. And I'm debating, because you save up 
points if you don't run it on something, and those saved up points then go in stacks of 100 to the next one. So I think after this, I'm going to wait for 1840 and then get the prestige game. Because we need prestige. There's no way around it. We need prestige. I mean, see, we're already at 15. We're, we're losing to some other powers because they have better military power. No, just prestige. They just have better military, industry, or prestige. And over time, see, we have 0 0.1, 0 0.01%, 0 0.02. So they're, they have these. Let's just uh, invest in this one because we have the money. Let's just invest in it. And these are the capitalists are trying to push out something. Uh, you can pretty much just not do that if you want and have the capitalists pay for everything, but oops, way over the top. Yeah, see, completely forgot about that. All right, clear focus, remove focus, and now you guys get clergymen. And once again, after clergymen, we're going to then go to uh, capitalists, push out to the limit, get as many research points as we can. And then we get clerks to 8%, hopefully. But there's some unemployed people here, and they're going to work. Just plain and simple. Alright. Anything else to talk about? No, however, this is a good point to stop. So, hopefully, hopefully everything goes well. We can get Denmark to be happy and maybe even an alliance might come into effect here. Alliance, they will not accept still. Uh, relations might push it over the top, so we might get it. So we want Denmark and Norway to accept our, our unconditional love and be awesome about it and form the Kalman Union and form Scandinavia. But that will have to wait for the next episodes. Uh, I hope you liked the video, and I will see everybody next time. Bye-bye.